joining me today is Nate Walters. <laughs> <laughs> you Irish man? Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> You getting the oatmeal out of there? Tastes Maybe? like, um... Have you ever talked to your parents about your childhood? Not really, no. So a cop shows up. There's a bunch of kids mm -hmm. with alcohol, fishing poles, yep. and a guy with one slipper. Yeah. <laughs> and they let you go. Yeah. I got rejected by a girl. And she was like, I like sporty dudes and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to put in the work now. And Why is it always the it, girl? You actually have to have brains yeah, to yeah. join the service. Yep. Well, that's that's a good... Just just I mean, a little bit. But <laughs> How does that make you feel? Pretty good. What did the army do to you? Were there any negative side effects? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's all about how you surround yourself to people and how you think about things. Uh, I surrounded myself with the wrong people. I was just drinking heavily. Um, it was snowing, black ice. The driver took a turn. We went flying into this ditch and... Welcome to the Barbells and Bourbon podcast, the podcast that allows real people to tell real stories. I'm your big, bald, bearded, Barbell lifting bourbon drinking son of a bitch, Sean. And joining me today is Nate Walters. <laughs> you Irish man? Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'm glad I uh, stuck that accent. Was that was that Irish or Scottish? I have no <laughs> I idea. I think they're like so close. I'm not that much Irish to tell you. Nathan Walters. <laughs> Anyways, happy St. Patrick's Day. Early, yeah, day yeah. early, day early. Yeah. Um, how was your week? Pretty good. Yeah, busy with work yeah what's the most exciting thing that happened to you this week most exciting thing oh man good or bad good something or that bad. stands out first thing that stands out i have a client she is 85 and she jump ropes and she loves to do it i'm that like awesome. we're trying to get her up to 25 reps of skipping rope that is crazy yeah good for her man yeah so i'll ask you what you do here in a minute but um where are you from i'm from new ken but uh it's also like like the Brackenridge area, Trenum. I grew up running around all all around there. Okay. Yeah. So for those who aren't from the Pittsburgh area, New Ken is short for New Kensington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's probably 15 20 minutes away from where I'm at, mm. right? So yeah, not a not too far of a trip for you. No. But um well, that journey, even though it wasn't <laughs> far, I'm sure it was arduous. Would you like to quench your thirst with anything I have here. First, are you willing to drink bourbon with me? Yes, I am. Okay. It's not a requirement, but I like to enjoy my passion with my guests who are willing to drink. So um, this is your choice, man. Mm -hmm. You can pick whatever you want. What do you recommend? I'm not a huge bourbon drinker. I like whiskeys. I love when people ask me what I recommend. Um, are you... Do you drink hard liquor? I drink it, but I do like shots. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I want you to have something that is has character, yeah. not just like something you drink to get to get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this one. This is my okay. girlfriend Maria's favorite, and this is the bottle that we shared. The day I found out that I was getting a new position and promotion. So okay. this means something to me. This is Angel's Envy Finished Rye. Angel's Envy is a very popular bourbon, but the finished rye is my favorite rye bourbon on the planet. Okay. And maybe you can tell me why, if you agree with how delicious it is. You said you're going out after this, right? Yep. So, so, it's a, so we're well, doing a little pregame here. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> and nothing wrong with pregaming. Nah. All right. So anyway. <clears throat> All right. So first, cheers. Welcome yep. to our house, dude. I want you to smell it. Tell me what you smell. Other than alcohol, do you get any specific scents or notes on there? 
Like cinnamon? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have you taste this in a second. Okay. But this is brown sugar oatmeal to me. And okay. It, it tastes like it. So okay. give it a... You getting the oatmeal out of there? Tastes Maybe. like um, the Kodiak o- oatmeal. Yeah. That's really good. Do you like it? Yeah. Wow. So this is something that you don't take shots with. Yeah. This is something that you sip and enjoy. What that's do you great. think? That's, is that's that good? really good. So this, the finished rye is kind of hard to find. It's about 90 to $95 a bottle. Okay. So okay. it's considered like, I'd say a top shelf. So is bourbon more of a sipping than like whiskey or something? Yeah. Bourbon's meant to be enjoyed slowly, in my opinion. <laughs> I was I was at a um, wedding engagement celebration party with a friend, and they were doing shots of like a rye bourbon. <laughs> I'm like... What are you doing? <laughs> Slow down. Enjoy it, man. <laughs> but anyway. You, you had to go over there and like, stop. stop. I know. You're like, <laughs> no. But anyways, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, um, it's this amazing. Is, again, this is one of my, it is my favorite rye and one of my favorite bourbons, period. So I'm glad I chose a good one for you. Yeah. So what do you do? Yeah. So I'm a uh, fitness trainer at Anytime Fitness. Actually, I want to thank you because before I was doing that magazine thing, and uh, we spoke together, we got a workout in, and I was like pretty inspired by you and doing your thing with fitness. And I was like, I love fitness and I just wanted to be able to help people. That's and so cool, man. So I just like quit that and I was like, I'm getting a job with uh, fitness, getting into it, and I just enjoy it. That is so cool. Now, I don't, so I don't know you very well at all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're not a stranger to yeah. me, but you're practically a stranger to yeah. me. We met once, mm-hmm. and like you said, you were starting um, this magazine journey. You were mm-hmm. going to be a publisher of a local magazine, and you reached out to me asking if I'd be interested in putting an article in your magazine. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we met in person at the gym. Yep. <laughs> we worked out together and discussed like the business side of, of things, and that's how we met. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that I was able to inspire you. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. I we were working out, and you were telling me about like your business and everything, how you like conducted it. And I'm like, it's something I love, and I want to keep on doing it. And being able to make a smile on someone's face, it just that really changes uh, not the way you think about life, but how they also think about life. It's the best feeling when you help someone live a better life. Mm-hmm. You know, feel happier in their clothes feel happier when they look in the mirror, mm-hmm. um, you know, stop taking certain medications because they're getting healthier. And I mean, it's just, that's why I do it. So I'm glad that you're feeling the same like gratitude and benefits. How, I mean, how's it been going for you? How many clients are you working with now? So the way Anytime Fitness works is that they kind of like bring in clients for you and you don't really get to pick and choose unless you're the first person you talk to, then you can put them in your schedule or something. But, um, clients all together because you'd also do like group settings so it's like classes also but uh personal i want to say about maybe 10 and then clients like that in the group chat or in the groups there's about maybe over 100 okay but that's the spread out throughout all all the trainers yeah so what like what's the age range of the people that you're training right now i want to say about 18 to 85 I that's mean, crazy. yeah there's a there's a large large group of different spans of different people do they, they, they all oh my gosh use your words sean <laughs> do they all have similar goals or are they kind of all over the place they're all over the place but a lot of them have similar goals of course uh losing weight and being able to figure out how to eat and stuff like that awesome yeah you said that 85 year olds <laughs> jumping rope yeah that is badass <laughs> yeah like do you ever follow do you follow um granny guns I heard of her. Yeah. 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 She was actually on the local news here in Pittsburgh a couple months ago. They did like a little, you know, a couple minute uh, segment Mm -hmm. on her. Um, She has a huge following on Instagram, Mm -hmm. but yeah, she has like super funny attitude and yeah, yeah, she's, 
she's pretty funny. So if you don't follow her, actually, okay. I'll, I'll tag Granny Guns on Instagram. <laughs> Granny, I want you. I want you sitting here one day, man. Girl, lady, whatever. Okay, so so you told me where you're from, mm -hmm. the New Kensington, Toronto area, which is you know not too far from here. Um, is that where you grow up? Is that where you were born and raised? Yeah, yeah. I was born in the I think New Ken New Kensington Allegheny Hospital. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Uh, born right over there. My uh, family was split, so I kind of went back and forth everywhere. Um, so I grew up running the streets in Brackenridge and also in New Ken and just moving around all the time. So going back and forth across that bridge is just pretty uh, how, it was, how it was. That's how it know? was, yeah. yeah. At what point in your childhood did your parents split? They were never really together. Okay. So like i like to say i'm like a bastard like game of thrones <laughs> <Bastard child. laughs> nice okay <laughs> yeah um they were never really together um on and off sometimes but uh never together uh sometimes they hate each other but it's just like a love-hate relationship they have yeah. um and just moving around a lot how did you handle that as a kid i mean you probably didn't know any any better right you didn't know anything different yeah um but, like seeing your friends, they might have had, I hate to say normal mm -hmm. families, but, you know, mom and a dad that were together and, you know, the way it, I don't say should be, but the, your typical. Yeah. How did your experience with a, I don't want to say broken childhood, how did that compare and how did that make you feel with your friends? I'd never really thought about it until I started getting older. Cause when you're a kid and you're just watching it happen, you're watching fights and stuff, and you're just like sitting there, like on the steps, like watching them yell at each other. You never really know what to expect, so you're just like, "Oh, he's going somewhere else, she's going somewhere else, and I'm just along for the ride." Hmm. But once you start to get older, you start to realize things, and you're like, "What's really happening here? Why are they doing this? Why am I getting pushed back and forth? Is it me or is it?" them and you have all these questions just going around in your head and then you start to think i'm the problem maybe it's me and then you just get lost in thought and next thing hmm. you know you're now you're sitting on the steps and you think it's you wow hmm, that's tough did do you have siblings yes i have a little sister how much younger two years younger so you're the same age relatively yeah, yeah so you were both bouncing around at the same time yeah um at one point, I decided just to go live with my dad, and then she lived with her mom. And uh, we kind of just went back and forth. I would spend a night over there sometimes. Uh, once my dad stopped traveling, then that's when I kind of moved in with him. And we just gone back and forth all the time. Did you ever talk to your sister about your childhood? We talk about it. We like to laugh about it okay. because that's this kind of personality that we have. We like to goof off and just be kind of like have that kid mindset yeah. and just play it off. And like we experienced some things and it was rough, but in the end, if you don't play it like cool in a way, then you can't really just get past it. So being able to think past the hurt and the trauma and be able to look on to brighter things then when you look back, it wasn't so bad. So you coped through humor and through yeah. positivity. And mm -hmm. I don't want to say you were brushing the issues under the rug, but that's, you kind of just avoided the conflict in confronting it in a way. Yep. Absolutely. As you got older, did the brushing under the rug philosophy come back to bite you at all? Um, sometimes it, really depends on like what's going on so like when something happens and like something's for you so for example when i got out of the military they were having like parties and stuff and they're actually together and they're bonding but after a year or so then they're like now they're hating each other again and it's like why would you act like you're nice to each other just for that one moment that was a special moment but you won't do it all the time so they were turning it on and off yeah. for you. Yeah. So you could just enjoy the moment mm -hmm. and celebrate, you know, that you know, special time in your life. I mean, I I sort of admire them for doing that because they wanted your day to be special, mm -hmm. but you know, as as the child, like, you know, why can't you guys just like each other all the time? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a fair question and a fair thought. Have you ever talked to your parents about your childhood? Not really, no. After so long, like, when I was grown up, I was really goofy and rambunctious and running around and stuff. And then once a certain age hit, then I got quiet turn into like this introvert and started going through like all this new life experiences and I just wanted to be quiet and it kind of carried on through like the rest of my life being an introvert until I got out of the shell and started experiencing new things and getting out of my comfort zone. I think with growing up I was outside of the box and then problems started happening then I went inside the box and then once I removed myself away from the situation, I started to learn how to go back outside the box. Do you feel like you were hiding? I think so. Yeah. 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 Trying not to be part of the problem. Just trying to stay away from the problem was probably how I did it to cope. So you blame yourself in a way, it sounds yeah. like, for the broken childhood you had. Um, have you ever confronted yourself with those feelings um yeah sometimes yeah. i wouldn't i would just go like did i do this why aren't they happy um is it me or my sister never really knew and never really got to the answer i know they just weren't perfect for each other and yeah. i realize that now um but yeah kind of brushed it under for a while but i think it's a lot better Good. now and yeah. Good thing that they're not together. So I'm glad you said that because I guess, you know, it just took time for you to realize that maybe they just weren't meant to be together. Yeah. And at the end of the day, maybe it's a good thing that, you know, they didn't stay close and mm -hmm. because that could have ended up toxic. Yeah. More toxic than it might have been. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that feels like a little bit of a weight lifted that you can kind of admit that to yourself. Um, so as a child, what were you like in school? How many, like, what was your friend circle? Did you play sports? Talk about Nate as a kid. Yeah. So I grew up, I liked playing sports growing up. And uh, I think when I turned again, like when I was being goofy and rambunctious and stuff growing up, once I got to like the middle school level and I started playing video games and stuff, I was overweight I, once I hit the middle school level, that's when I realized like I'm overweight, I'm fat, I'm ugly. All this thought started coming to my head. And that's when I started going back into that box and being an introvert. So the people I talked to in elementary school, they're having all these friend groups and stuff. And I'm just alone. So you, you felt like you didn't fit in anywhere. Yeah. didn't fit in anywhere. Um, I had one best friend still as my best friend. Um, we kind of went through it together. Um, but yeah, just was an introvert. Uh, I think video games was a big part of that because I quit playing sports and just kind of went into my own little space, playing yeah. video games, <laughs> getting into it very deeply. And then it was just easier for me instead of trying to put myself in a social circle and then feeling like embarrassed or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think video games was just an outlet for myself. Yeah. So you continue to hide. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you've, kind of crawled into your shell yep. and you know found something that you can you can enjoy mm -hmm. without facing people and yep. socializing and when did that stop it stopped about my right before senior year of high school of high school and that's when i got into fitness and started working out and all of that because I got rejected by mm -hmm. a girl and she was like, I like sporty dudes and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well I got to put in the work now. And Why is it always the it, girl? Yep. It's, yep, it's yep, your life. Yep. It's so funny. Yeah. It's all funny, but yeah. Go ahead. I, I think it's hilarious because yeah. like a lot of people, that's their, that's their like journey. Yeah, that's like, a it with a woman yeah. and then they change. Um, I feel like every portion of my life was because of a woman that I changed or did something different. Wow. And I think it's because it's a learning experience. And every guy wants to have a nice woman. Mm -hmm. And when you put yourself in a situation where you're not with a nice woman and then it ends up breaking your heart, you got to think to yourself, how can I change to be better? So again, 
and this is the second time that you sort of alluded to this, you felt like you were the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I see a running theme here. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you, before I have a guest on, um, I'll reach out, you know, a, a day or two before and just talk about how the show is going to go and ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. And you shared some pictures of your childhood with me and the picture, I'm, I'm not laughing. I'm sorry. The picture that you shared as a, as a child, yeah, it doesn't look like you. Yeah. Like it doesn't, um, you have glasses, you're on the chubby side. Hmm. It, it's just, I was just like, oh my, I, I wouldn't have believed it was you. The funny thing about the glasses was I hated wearing glasses. I felt like um, Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I have glasses on, I feel like I can't do anything. I can't lift. So I couldn't put contacts in. So I had to have my dad put the contacts in for me. Like you couldn't I physically couldn't, like I couldn't, touch your eye because it bothered physically. you. Yeah. yeah. And so my dad was like, hold my eye open. I'm like squirming around he just pops it right in That's so funny i would keep it in for a few days and then i'm like okay i gotta get these out and change them but one day i was like i gotta do this myself and i was like nate you got this and i just bam and shoved it right in and now now it's super easy and i'm yeah. like why why do i make such a big deal out of yeah. it? you're all grown up now you yeah. can put your own context yep in. yep, yep. <laughs> where where do you think that insecurity came from um as a kid you know i you're obviously, you know, on the chubbier side and, you know, I, I was a rough, I was a very late bloomer myself. So I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And you had pretty much one best friend. Did you feel like you weren't good enough? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that was like every day and didn't feel good enough. Just Did you get bullied? A little bit. Um, not too much. I good. mean, the way I did it was. I thought of it as like survival, like you got to survive in high school or something, but I was always quiet. Mm -hmm. So like when someone confronted me, I kind of like laughed it off and kind of like make joke of it. And then until the year before my senior year, I came back to school and I was a completely different person. I lost like, I leaned out. I didn't really yeah. lose weight. I leaned out, started getting toner and no one knew who I was. That's, it was really crazy. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, so I got voted most, uh, most changed and no one knew who I was. And one day in class, I can remember people were like, who is this dude? <laughs> I heard them talk and I'm like, I'm Nate. <laughs> tell been, tell me been, that didn't feel amazing. <laughs> it felt great. Like I was just like in my own head, it was in the computer class too. And I'm like, man, like I felt awesome. Like it was just like, I was on top of the world for that. Like is one that when, second. Is that when you broke out? Of your shell? <clears throat> no. Um, I start, when I started going to the gym, it started making me feel better and more confident. Uh, I want to say the army broke me out of my shell. Okay. Before you talk about the army, yeah. did you get the girl? No, I did not. No. <sighs> no. No. But not all bad. No. She indirectly still made you change. Yeah. Right? It was, it was your motivator mm -hmm. to get healthier, we'll say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And more confident. Yeah, she actually so, moved away. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever this girl is, thank you yeah. for changing Nate. Yeah, he changed absolutely. his life, so thank you. You yeah. probably had no idea that you did that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, anyways. Army. Yeah. So, you, it was, did you join the Army right out of high school? Yep. Okay. Uh, I didn't know where I wanted to go. My when we, So, we had to do, like, projects in school, and they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? Um, I was doing like Coast Guard because I thought it was easy, simple, but it was also cool at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I want to do that. Then a few months go by and I'm getting really good at the gym, getting like dedicated to it. And I like pushing myself. And I'm like, why should I like do the Coast Guard and take the easy way out? And why can't I do something harder? So I was like, I want to do the Army. So I started going on the treadmill track and everything. I started running. Um, and I was like, I just have to do the army and see where it takes me because I like the ventures. I like to challenge myself. And I think the army was the most challenging thing at that time because the Marines wouldn't take me. <laughs> uh, did you, so what is it? What's the like application process for the different what do you call them? Like divisions, services? Like what do you call yeah, branches? Branches. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, 
it, it's weird because each one has different like requirements and stuff. Uh, the army is probably the easiest one to get into, and that's the reason why I was able to go into the army. So, you said you were looking for like the easy road. Yeah, is that how you went through school? Like, yeah. did you just kind of coast oh, yeah. through? Oh yeah, I just coasted through. Um, I never studied for anything, and I hated doing homework and math, um, and I just hated it. So I was never did it. And in class, I tried to do my best just so I can get that B or C, just so I can pass and just go. So you never really applied yourself? No. No. Um, really at all until you got out of high school? Yep. You just kind of cruised through? Yep. All right. So you picked the Army? Yep. I picked the Army. The Marines wouldn't take me because I failed my ASVAP five times. What's the ASVAP? So the ASVAP is like a... Uh, you know, like for the SATs to get into college, it's kind of like that to get into the it's military. It's the prereq yeah. test you have to pass. Yeah, Is it I, a physical thing? No. So I passed the physical thing. They do a physical, and uh, it's like running and push-ups and throws and stuff like so that. So physically, you, you, you were yeah. fine. Physically, I was fine. Just I couldn't pass the ASVAP, and what they need from the ASVAP is for a job placement. So I think the Army is the only one you can actually choose your job. Where, uh, whereas Marines and Navy and Air Force, they choose one for you based on your ASVAP. I see. So I couldn't go into one of those because I couldn't pass the ASVAP. Whereas the Army, they can just waiver that, and then you can pick a certain amount of jobs that's already available. Okay. Yeah. So what what did you do really bad on? Like what did the math? Okay. Yep. Yep. And so you actually have to have brains yeah to yeah. join the service yep well that's that's a good just just I mean, a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just enough to like you know not do anything Get super stupid yeah that's interesting i had no idea i thought it was because you see all the movies you know boot camps and you know mm -hmm. hell week and you think it's all physical but you actually have to have some intelligence a lot of people don't it's, okay. it's crazy but i mean just common sense Okay. Common sense is about it. So you didn't have common sense because <laughs> you failed? <laughs> so I'm saying the common sense, like, once you're in, just have common sense. Just but just do what you're told. Just and do what you're told, yeah. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Yeah. A lot of people, they're stupid. Uh, funny uh, story was we're, we lived in a barracks. Where were you stationed? So my basic training was in South Carolina. Fort Jackson, I believe it's South Carolina. Yeah. Um, and we lived in these barracks that were like 80 years old. This dude, he uh, he was someone who liked to get in trouble a lot. And there was floorboards over one of the toilets in the stalls. And this dude, like you're not supposed to stand on the floorboards because you will fall through. He ended up falling through while he was taking a piss and we got chewed out for it for like three hours just doing push-ups after push-ups after push-ups just because this dude so, fell through the floor if one person fucks up oh, yeah. everyone pays for yep, it yep absolutely every time did you did you let him have it like were you pissed like how how does how, how does the group react towards that one person that ruined it for everybody else it's a group mentality that you got to have um so you can't some people do and you can do it like real quietly there's only so many drill sergeants that can catch things um but like some people you can hear them under the breath like this fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just cussing them out and i i've done it too i'm sure. like this, this That's, i mean it's natural natural but, response uh, yeah it's i mean once after like the first week or two, then you're like, okay, let's just get through it and we can do it together. And you just have that group mentality. And so that you, pack mentality. you win as a team, you yep. lose as a team. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. How did the army treat you? Pretty great. Um, I think the army treats its soldiers the way you would think they would treat it. Like you're not, you're not dirt, but you're also not a plant does that make sense yes you're just that kind of like that in the middle do what you say or do what uh, they say and just be happy do it with a smile do you think do you think they're doing that 
just to keep you tough, tough minded. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They break you down just to build you up. Got it. And when they break you down, they're teaching you all their, all the new protocols and stuff like that, because they want you to be the army. They want you to be the perfect soldier. Because in reality, what you're going to have to do is maybe kill someone. Yeah. And being able to mentally handle that, you got to go through tons of different tests and, you never know. I mean, it amazes me. And again, I can only use movies as references to mm -hmm. any, you know, military based scenarios, but it amazes me the situations that a soldier can be put in that they're not ready for. Yeah. You can only train for so many things. And then you're, you're confronted with this situation that could be life or death or affect you emotionally in ways that you can never imagine. And yeah you're trained to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't Absolutely. break, deal with it. Mm -hmm. You're serving our country. Don't be a bitch, yep. right? And then after the end of it, they slap you for reward and be like, did a great job. Then they just walk away. Wow. <laughs> so what did the army do to you? Um, I Well, I think they treated me very nicely. Um, it gave me a lot of life lessons. Um, how to break out of my shell, shell because they put me in a leadership position where I had to be loud and be able to, to talk to people and go through their problems as well and just talk to them and just be a people person, but know how to handle situations. Like if shit hits the fan, what are you going to do? Because you're their leader now. Interesting. So you were never in that position before that? Nope. Nope. I was never a leader or someone with leader capabilities. You were under the radar. Yep. Hiding mm -hmm. your entire life. Yep. And now you're a respected person within your, your, your troop or your branch or whatever you call it. I don't know, <laughs> but you know, now you're being looked upon yep. for that leadership. Yeah. Did that build your confidence? Um, in the moment you don't really think about confidence. You just think about how am I going to get past this time frame and on to the next like you think of everything in increments so are you, are you treating it like a job like this is yeah. my job yeah so you think of it as like your job you're like you got to get a to z done in a matter of one week after that week you're moving on to the next you're on to a totally different time frame of things how to react how to different protocols and you're just forgetting about that last week Okay. Um, but you're using what you learned in that last week to apply to this week. So everything's kind of like a building stage and building blocks, and you're using that to become a better leader yourself and also to help guide people. So what was your job in the Army? What were you the leader of? So that was all through basic. So after basic, you go do your actual job. You go to what's called AIT, Advanced Individual Training. So you do your job. You learn all about it. My job was a 25 Quebec. If I remember the name correctly, it's a long one. It is a multi transmissions communications operator and maintainer. <laughs> I think they changed it now, but it you just work on anything that deals with communications. So you're kind of like the jack of all trades for the communications field. And they train you how to do this? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. So you didn't know how to do this out of high school, obviously. Nope. Um, I did go to uh, electrical, so Votec. So I was able to score higher onto my, it's called GT mm -hmm. score. So it's like um, like automotive, uh, electrical stuff, kind of like technical skills. Um, so I scored higher on that. So I was able to get a better job. Okay. Yep. So you already had a background. So yeah. it wasn't like complete new yeah you know territory for mm -hmm. you that's good um so from a personality perspective what did the army do to you were there any negative side effects oh absolutely um it's all about how you surround yourself to people and how you think about things uh i surrounded myself with the wrong people and they gave me a sour taste of the army because they're always hating on it and being like, why are they treat me like this? I didn't do anything wrong. And they just like, I can't wait till I get out and stuff. If I surrounded myself with the right people in the time of my, I was growing, I was turning into something else. 
and I surrounded myself with the wrong people, so I was growing into them. And they were getting out of the military, and they had this sour thought of it, and I surrounded myself around them. And it kind of like disturbed how my growth process came out to be. And I also had the sour taste of the army. I'm like, I wanna get out, I can't wait to get out. And I had this really bad mindset, and if I flipped it around and had a more positive mindset, being, I can make this a career, I can get out in 20 years, <laughs> seems like a long time, but I can be retired at 35 with a pension and all my uh, medical stuff care, uh, taken care of. Yeah. But instead, I was like, I'm getting out because I hate this. And it was no really, really good reason for me to hate it, just that other people said it. And it gave me that mindset. Dude, how similar was your childhood to the army in the sense that you were your childhood was very toxic. Yeah. You're surrounded by toxicity nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, two parents that disliked each other constantly bouncing back and forth and you know, you having to put a smile on your face to get through it. And then the same thing happens in the yeah. army. Yeah. Toxic environment. Mm -hmm. I hate this man. Like I mean, as a as a person, you can only think of the positive so much before that mask just gets torn away. Like mm -hmm. the reality is still behind that mask. Like, yeah. so you can only, I guess, try to cover it up so much. Mm -hmm. What was the end? What was the last chapter of the army? Like, like what, how did you end your, your time there? Was it on a high note or a low note? Very low note. I, uh, I was just fed up with the army in general, um, for no good reasons either. Just, I just didn't want to be there no more. And I think it was because I was putting myself in positions where I probably shouldn't have been there in the first place. I was drinking a lot. I had a drinking problem. Um, it wasn't like to the point where I was calling myself an alcoholic, but people knew that oh, we probably shouldn't drink around him. Oh, and it was a trigger. It was yeah, it was a trigger, and and just I started drowning myself in drinking. Drinking was an outlet to get through the last year of my uh, my term, and it just kind of took a downhill spiral. Uh, started showing up to work drunk, wow. drinking, just not doing the activities I'm supposed to be doing to be a soldier, and. I started going to medical they were like hey you have a problem i'm like what is it they're like you have bipolar depression and i'm like i don't really know what that means or anything and they started medicating me giving me it's called happy pills they make me happy and just i just want to be left alone i just wanted to go work out left be left alone do my own thing um but they started medicating me and I was out of country, so I was also alone. I was with my brothers and sisters, which are members of the army, army yeah. but I just felt like alone in that moment. And I just wanted to drink on all these medications and just to numb the pain. Wow. So I was just coming home or in back into the barracks, not following the rules and stuff and just puking when I came home because all the medications and it just sleeping forgetting about formations stuff like that yeah wow so you went from this leadership role yeah the top of the mountain you know you were looked up upon you were trusted obviously to be in that leadership position and yet kind of threw it all away mm -hmm. because of the people that you surrounded yourself with yep they gave you that sour taste mm -hmm. how does that make you feel today uh pretty good actually Really? Yeah, because now I have, I know what I did wrong. And I'm a quick learner. So, like, if you put something in front of me, I have no idea how to do it. At least I try to learn how to do it and do my best at it. And learning from the past only makes me do better things going forward. So, I learn from those experiences. I don't regret them because it just made me who the person I am today. Yeah. And I'm just keep on rolling, trying to snowball affect this and just keep becoming a better person. 
That's very respectable, man. And I'm sorry for sounding surprised when you said that you felt good about it. I was not expecting you to say that. No. But that is, that's, I mean, now that you explain it, that's super cool. Did you, did, I mean, did you end up, when do you graduate? Like, what's the end? Like, the, like the end of like the military? Yeah. Uh, so I didn't really have one. So usually they give you like a gift or something and be like, oh, thank you for your time here in this battalion and like all this like stuff. But we were on a rotation. So, it's not a deployment, but you're not in like a hostile area. Mm -hmm. I was in Poland and they were like, Hey, good job. Your flight is ready to go and you're leaving. I'm like, nice. I'm thank God. So do you think they kicked, did they kick you out? They didn't kick me out. Okay. So, so I went back to garrison. So that means like just your home environment. So your home base, which was Fort Rally, Kansas. Um, and they kind of do the, like all the out process and stuff. So there's, you're signing papers all the time, doing all this work, turning in gear, stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's like, okay, you're good to go sign this paper and you can leave. Hmm. So, I mean, I guess we didn't really like finish this part of the story, but how did things end with the the bipolar depression diagnosis and drinking on the medications mm -hmm. and showing up late and not doing your job how did your your higher ranking how did they handle a soldier acting that way in the army i was very fortunate and unfortunate because usually someone acting like that they would slap like an article 15 on you so they're taking away your pay your rank everything yeah i wouldn't think that that's something that's tolerated yeah very much luckily i had a first sergeant who was also getting out of the military and he was retiring so he didn't care at all because he was out anyways he was out anyways and it got to the point where everyone knew that i was done for and I was getting out and I couldn't take the army anymore. So they kind of like just brushed me off. They just let things fall in the place yep. and let you just, wow, that's yep. interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you think would have happened if you didn't have a drill sergeant that was retiring soon? So it wasn't a drill sergeant. It's a first sergeant. First sergeant. Yep. So drill sergeant is <clears throat> only in um, basic training Got and it. AIT. Okay. But um, I, so my first time in Germany, I kind of messed up and I got my wisdom teeth taken out and I wanted to save up all my, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, like the, the pain meds, pain meds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pain meds and just enjoy them because they can't really tell you that you can't take them, can't take them because they are for pain. Um, so I saved them and I would take them when I was going out or something and I was in Germany at the time, and there was a little club on outside the base. And I went there, drank way too much, uh, ended up somehow making it back on base. Don't really remember how. Um, and I was outside out the barracks where it was open bay barracks. So you're living with first sergeants and everyone who's higher rank. And I'm out there puking just talking super loud being obnoxious and the next day my squad leader sergeant he came up to me and was like you're lucky that the sergeant major just got in today i don't want to put anything on his plate when he just got here so you're lucky and you're just going to be doing extra duty for like a month so i was like okay thank you dude you locked out a few times uh, i'm Somehow my luck is horrible on little things, but big things I have decent luck. How many lives do you think you have left, man? <laughs> you better be careful yeah. to walk in and under any ladders. Yeah, oh man. But uh, I don't know the the drinking because I wasn't. I went to as soon as I got to my base, my actual base, Fort Rally. They sent me to uh, Germany, Poland, Romania. And over there, you can drink at 18. Mm -hmm. I was 18 years old, and I'm getting introduced to alcohol, and I'm just going to clubs and bars, and I'm drinking. And other army men, they're 
they're teaching me how to drink and they know how to drink. So, oh so it just kind of turned into a habit of drinking. And once you get back to the States, I can't go and buy liquor. So I'm paying people extra money to get it for you, to get it for me. And they're, they got to a point where they're like, we're not buying this for you because it's turned into a problem. And so I'm like, I'm going to the wrong people now. I'm going to people that are really toxic and they're buying me liquor and beer and all of this. And then they're like, now I want you to hang out with me wow. to drink this. So the people that actually respected you weren't feeding your problem. Yeah. So you turned elsewhere. Yep. Because you had, you had to get your fix mm -hmm. and you did what it took to get it. Yep. No. And that's the, that's the crowd you ended up hanging out with. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I hang out with, I hung out with, um, I mean, pretty decent people, but also there was, there was spectrums of people that were good and then others were not good at all. And it's weird how the ones that were not good at all are still in the military. <laughs> Yeah. So it's, it's weird how it works out. But yeah. So you're bouncing between these different personality groups of friends, acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you, you know, in that phase of your life with the drinking and just that, I don't want to say you were kind of like derailing yourself, mm -hmm. but like what's like the most – Traumatic event that ever happened. Traumatic event. I want to say, I wouldn't be the drinking. It would be not being able to think properly to know this is a bad situation I'm putting myself in and doing that situation anyways. Um, I They ha had me on medications and stuff and I was drinking on those medications. So like I was blacked out. And I'm just going along with the with the party, just mm -hmm. following the party. And it just led me into bad situations that I could have died in. And those weren't great at all. What was one of the situations? Um, we got into a car and my they weren't they were my friends, but they weren't like super like friendly like they're acquaintances yeah. but like kind of in the middle of friends and Got acquaintance. It. um we uh i was actually living at their house because i don't want to stay at the barracks anymore i was moving out at that point and i was just drinking heavily um it was snowing black ice the driver took a turn we went flying into this ditch and I didn't have no seatbelt on. There was bottles of liquor in there, fishing poles, anything, bats. Um, and I flew forward. Luckily, I didn't go through the windshield because I had no seatbelt on, nothing at all. But I hit the passenger's airbag that went off, and I fell backwards. So I went back forwards towards the windshield, the airbag hit my back and I had a big bruise all over it and everything. And I was back in the back seat. The dude that was driving, he had really bad anxiety. And I sobered up like super quick after that. And probably the shock, the shock of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're tipped over on the side. I had to open up the door and this dude, he's freaking out. And he's like, the car's on fire, the car's on fire. And I'm like, fuck, now I'm going to fucking die because I'm drunk. I can't really get this door open all the way. So you thought it was on fire. I thought it was on fire. And you can smell it. But um, I ended up, he was freaking out, got out. I was the last one to get out. I went up to the front, turned off the car because he left it on. So that's why. And it was just rolling. It was got just it. going. And it was just revving itself up so that you could smell like the kind like of like the the, rubber burning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All of that to turn it off, stopped, got out, sobered up, walked up to the road. And as soon as I hit the road, it's black ice, all black ice. He had, I don't know why he had one slipper on 
And I'm like, why'd you go out? Like in my mind at that moment, I was like, why'd you go out with slippers on? And I'm just like thinking like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> of all the things that yeah. bother you in that yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, that slipper. And he's freaking out and the cops are there. And this guy pulled up and he's in this truck. They, so they're flaring up the road. They're like, no one's allowed to come down this road. So the cops showed up. The cops showed up. Yeah. And they showed up really fast and everything too. So uh, this guy in a big truck pulled up. He was like, hey guys, get in. I can take you home. The cops didn't question us at all. And we just left and went home. The next morning, my head was, I was spinning. It wasn't hungover. I probably had a concussion. Got it. Um, but it was just bad. My back was all bruised from up at the neck all the way down to the tailbone, just bruised up. And I don't know how I didn't go through the windshield. So the airbag was See, a barrier yeah. of you flying through the windshield. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. What state was this in? Uh, Kansas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so a cop shows up. There's a bunch of kids mm -hmm. with alcohol, fishing poles, yep. and a guy with one slipper. Yeah. <laughs> and they let you go. Yeah. <laughs> I think what? I think he saved us because he was freaking out so much. He was uh, crying. <laughs> and I think they felt bad because he only had one slipper on. So we just, <laughs> the guy pulled up and we're like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god nate how many times are you gonna get saved in this in this lifetime of yours i don't know first I'm, was your retiring first sergeant second was the whoever who said that he's not going to turn you into the director yeah the air airbag saved your life yeah the kid with the slipper saved your life <laughs> Holy the kid hell. with the slipper <laughs> that's thank amazing you. Thank, thank you kid you. with the yeah. slipper <laughs> That is, I mean, it's not funny, but it's freaking funny. Yeah. I like to laugh about these things too, because if it didn't, <clears throat> I mean, if it turned out differently, you still have to have a positive mindset about it because yeah. I'm alive. I'm well. So you got to have a positive mindset about it. If you have a negative mindset about it, it's just going to eat you up and you're just going to die thinking about this. Let me ask you this, Nate. You've gotten pretty lucky. Oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. Is there ever a point where you're like, luck is only going to last so long. Oh, yeah. Luck's going to run out. Oh, yeah. Maybe I need to start making different decisions. Oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> okay. But um, like I said, for some, we call it the Walter's curse, my family, because we have the worst luck on little things. So nice, peaceful morning, waking up, about to get your coffee, hit your toe. Yeah. Stub it. Got it. Next thing you know coffee pot breaks <laughs> next thing you know car won't start got it next thing you know late to work and it's all this other things falling down into the same place and you're like it's walter's luck you like you like you can't win the day so first world problems first world problems yeah but it's once one thing happens everything happens so we call it the walter's luck and i think my family's pretty lucky because from the stories I heard from like my dad and my mom, like, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like how, how am I here? It's just the luck of the Irish. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. I think I'm onto it. Yeah. Wow. All right. So you have this accident mm -hmm. slipper boy. Somehow his insanity saves, saves the day. Where does your life go after that? Yeah. So I, leave the army, come back home, searching for a job, find a really shitty job because doing what? So I worked in a, uh, it's called a Benshaw, really shitty company. Um, they do not treat their employees correctly at all. Um, but I was a wireman. So I was working on transformers and motor control, stuff like that. Um, and I was doing it part time and also going to school. Uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but funny enough, when I came back from the military, I got myself a girlfriend and her family was pretty wealthy. So I was like, I need to go to college because I feel like if I'm not worthy enough, then you I had to meet a standard. I had to meet a standard. 
Um, they never said anything like that. They yeah. never really really pushed anything. They they were just happy I was in the military. Yeah. Um, but I know that's the kind of life that she lived up to me. So I wanted to be that person. Yeah, you for wanted her. to prove yourself. Yeah. yeah. So I started going to school. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I liked geology in high school. I like just going on field trips and yeah. <laughs> hanging out in nature. So I was like, <laughs> you sound like a hippie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Far out, <up>, man. <laughs> That's funny you say that because I was going to bring you something. It was going to gonna be shrooms. I had some, and I was going to bring some for you. But <laughs> but Did you see the episode with Dan? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he would have loved. Yeah. He probably... He probably has them himself. <laughs> yeah. That is... Okay. All right. <laughs> that, keep that as a side note. But right. um, what was I talking about? Bringing me shrooms. What a what a welcome gift. <laughs> um, you were talking about you met a girl, wealthy family. Yeah. You wanted to go to college. Yeah. So geology, like it was geoscience. I was like, I want to try this out, see if I like it. Didn't like it. It was very difficult. So I switched majors to, um, I think it was, so I went undecided. And I was just getting all my general ed education yep. done. And I was like, I want to do maybe project management. I had no idea what it was, but I know I wanted to be, I didn't want to be the grunt anymore. Sounds important. Yeah, sounds important. I didn't want to be the grunt. I didn't want to be the person that's breaking their back all the time. You wanted to be the leader again. I wanted to be a leader. Uh, so I was like, project management, see how that goes. I just dropped out entirely because they started pushing things on me and it started turning into like school that wasn't school. It was more of read this book. Tell me what the book says. You're wrong. And I'm like, oh. uh, I don't like this. And it wasn't for me. I'm more of a hands-on person. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't adding up. And I started diving into my resume and kind of like, what have I accomplished? And I'm like, I can get a good job with my resume because I have the leadership skills. I have electrical skills. I have over seven years of electrical um, communications Da, 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 da. You served. That has to be respectable, right? People think so. Okay. But if you have a degree and you have the experience, then that trumps okay. everything else. Got it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so I was like, I'm just dropping out. I just don't want to do this anymore. And now I uh, I started doing like different things on the side. So like the magazine, I went got into sales. I started reading books and watching YouTube videos on how to become like a salesman. And actually I read the book, uh, rich dad, poor dad, and it got me into sales. Okay. I quit my job entirely. And I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going, I want to pursue something differently. And I got into sales, did solar sales. Um, I had a feeling the company was going under. So I left next and a few months later, the company goes under. Okay. Uh, good, so, good choice yeah good choice um and did start doing the magazine and i enjoyed it i enjoyed talking to different businesses and stuff it just wasn't uh practical okay um and so i moved on you inspired me to pursue something i love and that was fitness and i got into fitness how crazy is that man yeah how old are you now 24 i just turned 24 in february February what? Tenth. Okay, I'm twentieth. Okay. Are you? You're not Pisces. No, I'm a Aquarius. Okay, yeah, I'm like, I think the nineteenth is the cutoff. I don't, I don't, I should know this, but it's something like that. I know I'm like right on the edge. I don't, I don't really keep track of that stuff. I don't, my girlfriend, she's like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, babe, your horoscope today, and they're actually really interesting. Yeah. Like all joking aside, all of the horoscopes that show up for her and me are kind of scary accurate Some, yeah like specifically scary sometimes i mean not like generalities like you're going to go outside today yeah it's like you're going to go outside and confront something that and it's like oh my god that that actually happened i i, I don't know i totally like i believe in it to an extent but i'm not looking at the stars and be like you yeah. know what? Today is a good day to go out and play the lottery. But yeah, but um, I, I believe in it to an extent. And 
I always made fun of my one friend because she was always into that stuff. She was like a crystal girl. Okay. And I was, she would be like, you know what? You're going to be having a great day today. And you're going to be doing this and this and this. And then I was like, fuck you. No, I'm not. <laughs> and I did the totally opposite thing for the whole day. What just about to, Mr. Positive Nate? Just, what yeah, happened? <laughs> just to piss her off. Oh, my God. I'm guessing that didn't last. It's just as a friend. So, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. No, <laughs> so, right. I didn't care. Okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Nothing to lose. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, how did how did things end up with the girl that you wanted to go to college for? Oh, it didn't work out great. She uh, <laughs> she actually dumped me over. So we were together for over a year. Okay. She dumped me over the phone after I left her house like an hour beforehand. Did you like rip a fart before you left? Like what happened? She So we were having some troubles. Like for the whole year, it was great. And then we went to a wedding together. And I just wanted to dance. Just wanted to have one dance. Uh, she was like, no, I don't want to dance or anything. So um, I started drinking. I was like, I'm going to get drunk. You're going to have fun. And no the thing was, what. her yeah. parents were there also. So they were like, yeah, Nate, drink. Like, oh, okay. yeah, they were kind of encouraged me. And we were just drinking. Me and her parents were drinking. She had to work the next day. And she got up, and her brother was driving her. She was like, hey, you coming? And I'm like, no, I'm going to stay here. And so I stayed at the wedding with her parents just drinking. And at the end, helped the parents and everything clean up the whole wedding. Um, she sends me a text. She's like, I want you to leave as soon as you get home. And she had all my bags packed when I got there. And I'm just like, well, fuck. Wow. But fast forward a month, things after that started getting really rocky. Like, I wanted to go to a concert. It was the day before the concert. It was a Luke Combs concert. And mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, it's only like 50 bucks for a ticket. My sister, her boyfriend's going, let's go. Like, you can take off work one day. You'll be fine. Let's go enjoy this moment. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, 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 no. So I went without her. Yeah. So I feel like it was, I wasn't going with people that were, like your other, sister. Yeah, it's my yeah. sister and her boyfriend. Yeah. And I was like, this is like a moment that I won't be able to get. And this is my first concert. So I was like, I want to do this. Yeah. And so I went without her. And she really is like, after those two moments, she just like, was like, I'm not happy anymore and moved on. I think that was for the best. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it is too. Do you think she was like trying to hold you back from like, living life or was she insecure like what was going on there i don't know um when i think about it now i think she was holding me back because i started getting into sales i started learning more about myself and what i can accomplish um i think she was just holding me back to that point where i just wanted to be happy and be there for her and accomplish her goals but not mine i never had goals for myself that I always wanted to be was a husband and have kids, but I didn't have anything to get there. So I think that was kind of like where the misconception was, where it was like, I'm happy and I want to help you with your goals. I don't care what kind of job I have. I just want to be there for you. But instead of worrying about myself and my goals and my inhibitions, I was just, hey. So you were sacrificing your own happiness yeah. for her happiness. Yeah. And that's how she liked it I think, until you started making, putting yourself first yeah. on occasion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing you don't talk to her anymore. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I mean, yeah, it's everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And you said that as soon as we started this mm -hmm. episode, you know, everything happens and puts you down a path, which is probably the path you're meant to take. And, you know, it's probably really good that you guys aren't together anymore mm -hmm. because she probably would have held you back. Um, so you're kind of like entrepreneur right now, or kind I of, mean, I, you kind of found your, your, your place now yeah. with, with the fitness thing. Mm -hmm. But up until then you were sort of trying to find your place. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm still trying to aim, like still trying to find my place. Uh, I always believe that never close a door. Keep doors open mm -hmm. because you never know what opportunity is going to come up and present itself. 
So I never close a door. Um, so I love the fitness thing. I would love to have my own gym one day or just my own clientele one day. Um, but I think right now a good start in position is at the gym where the clients are kind of like handed to me. Yeah. I think that's a great starting place. And I know that I want to be an owner of something. So I think the future does hold that for me, uh, being able to own something on my own. Um, but I'm also looking at other things. Like I love sales. Yeah. I think sales is a great thing for just about anyone to just get into because it gives you good uh, skills for life. Yeah. yeah. Don't ever corner yourself Yeah, and put yourself in a position where you feel like you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Open doors. Yeah. Right. And I live life the same way. I mean, I am involving myself in so much shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that. Mm -hmm. Like, you you follow me. Yeah. And it's like, what what am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, Sean, calm down. Like, mm -hmm. you, you only have so much time in the day. But I admire that about you wanting to, you know, always find that next opportunity mm -hmm. and constantly improve yourself. And you do realize that certain things are going to improve certain aspects of you personally and, you know, maybe business sense or financial sense. So having that awareness is important too. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I think you're going to do great things. I mean, yeah, you have a good you. attitude. I'm glad that you're not on cruise control anymore because mm -hmm. you were for a very long time. Yeah. And it sounds like the army sort of was that tipping point for you in mm -hmm. a sense. I think it made you realize a lot about, yourself personally and i think that toxic environment in the friend kind of circle that you created ended up being a good thing mm -hmm. what do you think would have happened if you went through the army the way you should have mm -hmm. where do you think you'd be today i think i'll still be an army yeah i say this all the time like i think the army would have been a great career for me because it's funny you learn more things about the army when just once you get out than when you're actually in. So I learned so much more when I got out because they make you go to uh, this thing called muster duty where they make you like come back, do like a whole physical, physical assessment and stuff. And they see if you're still fit because technically I'm still am in the army. It's called inactive ready reserve. Okay. So if shit ever goes down, they can call me, but uh, they have to make sure you're still physically fit and all this good stuff. Not off the couch, yeah, as they yeah, say. Yeah. Um, and when they show you like all the available jobs and they're trying to get you to come back in the army. So like once you see like kind of like the back end of it, they're like, you're like, I could have had this job, this job, or this job. I would have been staying in the army if I had this. So why don't like. So you still have a glimpse of what it could have been. Yeah. Because they're constantly like sending mm -hmm. you information about open positions yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Does it ever make make you regret not applying yourself a little bit more? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I do. Um, but you can't regret things. No. It, it, you, if you regret it, then you're just going to go down a path that isn't right for you. I think regret can be good and bad. As long as you're learning from it. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah. You know, but you can, you can regret something and just live in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it could be very, a very dark place to live in. And you're never going to just allow yourself to break out. So yeah, it, it's a learning tool. Mm -hmm. um, all right. You know what time it is. Can I wrestle? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> you're probably going to beat me. You know what? No. We're not we're not keeping track. I think you are. <laughs> the episodes speak for themselves. <laughs> so it is funny because I'm booked through today is March sixteenth. Fifteenth. Sixteenth. Today's the sixteenth. I'm booked through mid July. Okay. I do have some guests coming on that I'm actually terrified to arm wrestle. I'm talking they're big boys. Yeah. And I'm actually looking forward to the challenge. So anyways, I'm not saying that you're not a threat, but I'm I horrible. have some definite threats coming. I'm horrible at arm wrestling. I think it's because of my, what's this part called? I forget. Uh, I don't know. The, the know. forearm is small. On well, this head. is, as we line up here, you're going to just, you're probably going to laugh. <clears throat> All 
All right, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. You know how this goes. Yep. This is like this is like hot ones. Okay. All right, you start whenever you feel like it. Are you starting? You're gonna start. Just start whenever you want. All right. Do you think your parents are proud of you? Yes. Do they tell you they are? Yes. How does that make you feel? Pretty good. God damn. <laughs> okay, <we're done. laughs> so you still, I mean, you still have a good relationship with your parents? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Are they, are they still, they're, they're not together still? No, they're not together. Uh, the funny thing is, so today we're going on a bar crawl. Oh, you're going with them. Yeah, so well, what my sister and I did was um, we invited. So my mom, it was my like my mom's thing to go to the bar crawl and stuff, mm -hmm. and we're gonna tag along. And I was like, "Hey," uh, to my dad, I was like, "Hey, we're gonna go on a bar crawl." So I invited him too. And so they're gonna come together without knowing each other. Gonna go. And, oh. and we just think it's funny because we know that they're going to fight or something's <laughs> going to happen. So it's entertainment for my sister and myself. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and get alcohol involved. Uh -huh. Who knows what's going to happen? And then we got my aunt involved, too. They're like, we're going to bring her, too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is fun now. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have a good time. And it's like your old stomping grounds, right? Yeah. 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 It's, I think it's like six or seven bars that we're going to go to. Okay. Should be fun. Well, unfortunately, you're probably not going to drink anything as good as what you had. Today. Yeah, I don't know. This is one of the better things you're probably going to have. When when you're drunk, you really don't care what you're drinking. <laughs> That's so. true. As long as it gets the job yeah. done. Yeah. So I do want to ask you about mm -hmm. that. You obviously had a big problem with yep. alcohol. How do you handle that today? Um, just knowing where to stop. Because, again, like when you're going into an ar like into the army – you're trying to fit in. I was trying to fit in and knowing that everyone drank, I knew I had a drink to drink to fit in. So drinking was kind of like a culture. It was just everyone's drinking and yeah. fitting in. The kind of same concept applied because we had these things called smoke pits and where people with smoke or chew tobacco would go in these pits and then they became friends. Got it. So when someone's like, hey, you want to come out to drink? And you're like yeah, I want to go because I want to be part of the circle. So that's kind of like how it got me into it. But um, just not being able to lose control, being able to stay on point and having a few drinks, but knowing your limit yeah, um, is a big part of it and not being able to black out. <laughs> yeah, I think just hearing your story, you were using alcohol as a coping mechanism yeah. to hide certain parts of your life. I think the fact that you've got through that dark time you're no longer needing to use alcohol to cover things up yeah now it's just for enjoyment purposes mm -hmm. like social purposes and not you had to have it to feel normal mm -hmm. so i think your life changing helped because I, I was completely honest with you when i asked about your history I asked for some keywords that define mm -hmm. who you are. And one of them was like alcohol problem. And then when I asked you if you'd be willing to drink and you said, yes, I was actually surprised. I was like, Oh yeah. I was not expecting you to say that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that as in any offense, yeah. but I'm glad that you got through your issue. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it was an addiction. No, I don't, I don't. But it was, it was probably weird. borderline. Yeah, borderline. Yeah, but yeah, you know, the fact that your life did change mm -hmm. that you don't have to rely on it as a coping mechanism anymore is is a good. Yeah. Wow i I didn't expect all this from you, man. <laughs> like again, like I said, you were essentially a stranger. Mm -hmm. But I look at you. I see you're, you're fit. You're a good looking guy. I have, we had no idea that you had a broken childhood, that you were a chubby, nerdy introvert, that you kind of fucked your way up through the army. Mm -hmm. You never really applied yourself in school. Like, this is a perfect example, and this is a running theme on this podcast of judging someone 
by their outward appearance. I had my image of who you might have been. I did not expect this. Mm -hmm. I mean that in a good way, you know, because there's other people who are going to be watching this and listening to this that have gone through something that you've gone through. Whether it's broken childhood, alcohol problem, you know, not trying to apply themselves, feeling like you're not good enough in your story is going to help them. Yeah. That's why you're sitting there. Right. Absolutely. So thank you for helping all of the people that you're going to help. What, this is your chance to like promote yourself. Mm -hmm. um, like what, what do you want people to know about you? Um, can they turn to you for fitness advice? Like what can you do for, for these people? Yeah. Uh, fitness advice, uh, nutrition and stuff. I don't want to take away from you because no, I know you're a, this is yeah, not, yep. This is about you, dude. Yep. Uh, yeah. Fitness advice, um, nutrition, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, even like going through something that is difficult in your life. I like helping people. Good. And that's what stems into the fitness community is being able to help people and not just lose weight or anything that's fitness related, but just health in general, mm -hmm. just being able to, to give someone advice and be able to help them and maybe help them achieve their own goals and be able yeah. to set themselves up for success or put them on a good path yeah. and take a different direction in life. So if you're listening to Nate and if, you know, if he's resonating with you and you want an unbiased ear to talk to and have listened to you reach out, I'm going to have your information um, on the screen, I'm going to put it, you know, in the description of the video for a place to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you willing to help others that need it. Yeah. Um, that says a lot about you before we close. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I don't think where you get that shirt from. <laughs> That's a nice shirt. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is my project one gold. This I mean, this is guys like this is sweet has the American flag and gold. So yeah, project one nutrition.com. They mm -hmm. have all their, their merch on there. They actually gave me this mm. for being a, uh, elite squad member. Okay. I'm one of their ambassadors. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, this actually shows up really cool on camera. Yeah. But anyways, well, man, I appreciate you coming on. I learned a ton and let's get another workout in soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can teach me some some things. Hey, I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm always willing to learn too. Mm. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Nobody does. So yeah. I'm always willing to learn new things. Mm -hmm. But appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Thank Have you. fun tonight on their bar, bar yep. crawl. Yep. Be careful. Thankfully, I live right up the block from all the <laughs> so bars. You can I can just crawl home. I, if I really wanted to, yeah, I can crawl home. Is Slipper Boy going to be there? <laughs> I have no idea where he's at right now. He's probably looking for his other slipper. <laughs> probably. <laughs> on that note, I will see you on the next episode of Barbells and Bourbon. Peace. <laughs> slipper boy. <laughs>